Hello friends and welcome back to another video which is our episode 6 breakdown and review of the Rings of Power season 2 and it looks like Middle Earth is heading to a battle with episode 6 titled where is he preparing viewers for an enticing and dramatic battle which will unfold over the next few episodes with also glimpses into Numenor, Khazad-dûm and Rune as well Episode 6 takes us all over Middle-earth, with Eregion still being its central focus. So let's firstly break it down and then get into our review. Rings of Men and Pride When Celebrimbor was having problems with creating the other rings which are left, which are of course the nine rings for men, he mentions quote, What pride is woven in your inmost self? which also mirrors what the ring bearers of the nine in future will be like as they were originally men fueled with pride that Sauron was able to capitalize on and of course give them a ring, so some cool foreshadowing there. Sauron's black and gold costume We finally see Sauron wearing his black and gold costume which interestingly in the midsection has a snake-like design and creature woven around his body and this could be in relation to previous descriptions of Sauron's deception earlier in the season, particularly when Adar mentions Sauron quote slithering and quote worming into people's mind to take control, so maybe this is some explicit imagery of his deception on his own costume whilst of course in Eregion and fooling Celebrimbor so there's a little bit of irony there as well. And we see him again later on in the episode definitely slither into Celebrimbor's mind by basically putting him in his own dream world. Close look at a Silmaril. We see again the statue of Feanor but interestingly we also get a look and a close look in fact at the Silmaril in his hand and this is almost again ironic as we had just previously seen in the previous scene Celebrimbor tinkering away at trying to perfect the nine rings of men to almost eclipse this singular jewel that is right outside his doorstep in the hands of Feanor on the statue. So it's almost symbolic, Uruk. We get a callback to Adar and Galadriel's first interaction from season 1 episode 7 where Adar corrects Galadriel in that dramatic moment and says Uruk in reference to him being an Uruk and not an Orc. We see the same correction again by Adar in the exchange which is also quite a cool callback to season 1 and their previous interaction. Elendil son of Amandil for the first time, we hear reference to Amundil, the father of Elendil, who famously sailed west to the Undying Lands, asking for the Valar's help, and a character who has been omitted so far in the show. So, is he alive? Is he dead? Hopefully, we get some clarity soon. Farazon also, during his speech, refers to Elendil's quote, faithful service, which is a good play on words as of course Elendil is a part of the faithful. The Secret Fire Tom Bombadil makes numerous references of the secret fire and that the stranger has to control it. The secret fire, also known as the Flame of Anor, is of course heavily related to Gandalf where in the Fellowship of the Ring, when facing the Balrog, he exclaims, quote, I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame Anor, you cannot pass, the dark fire will not avail you, flame of Udun, go back to the shadows, you cannot pass. Many that die deserve life. The Gandalf hints continue as Tom Bombadil in his speech to the stranger rephrases and reverses some of Gandalf's famous words from the Fellowship of the Ring which where Tom Bombadil says quote, many that die deserve life, some that live deserve death, who are you to give it to them? In the Fellowship of the Ring of course, Gandalf says, many that live deserve death, 
and some that died deserve life. Can you give it to them? Then do not be too eager to deal out death in judgment. So again, these hints to Gandalf in the exchange with Tom Bombadil keep on keep on building up. So are we potentially heading to a scenario where it is almost looking likely now that the stranger is indeed Gandalf unless there is of course a big shock twist and he isn't but it seems like they are really hinting him to be that so it's looking like that is the most likely scenario as of episode 6. Something more precious. Anita offers King Durin III timber, wood and other resources in return for more mithril to forge the rings but the final thing he says is quote or something more precious, with a big emphasis of course on precious. Then once he leaves in the next scene, King Durin is very reminiscent of Bilbo from The Lord of the Rings, with a paranoid attitude where Gandalf asks him to take off the ring, which is something Durin the fourth actually asks King Durin the third here. So even though the show isn't specifically making during the third call his ring my precious as that would be too much on the nose and maybe too much of a callback. This instead is more of a cool nod to instead how a ring bearer becomes so attached and consumed by the ring and becomes crazy as we saw Durin in the very next scene showing almost similar traits to that of Bilbo and Gollum that we saw in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit so it's quite an interesting and ironic moment. Also near the end of the episode in Celebrimbor's dream world Sauron makes further reference to the rings of power being precious. Balrog in the flames when Anatar hears that King Dune the Third will not offer any more mithril, he conjures up an apparition of the Balrog we saw from season 1 in the flames and maybe this is foreshadowing for what's to come, either for the rest of the show or even more limited to foreshadowing what's going to happen for the rest of this season if we do again see the Balrog in some way and maybe in relation to King Durin the third somehow. Maybe of course the end of the discussion with Durin the fourth ends with King Durin the third making sure that Na'vi continues to dig deeper and deeper so it's interesting that right after seeing this apparition of the Balrog the first thing Durin the third says to Durin the fourth is tell Na'vi to dig deeper and double the expansion of digging deep to fight Mithril so maybe this is almost an omen from Anatar. Sauron's plan. Adar is sending an army of orcs to attack Eregion and we can further see Sauron's manipulation and him moving the pieces of the chessboard in his favour as Galadriel even mentions this to Adar when stating that he is falling into his trap by sending Sauron an army of orcs essentially. It is made clear that Celebrimbor is now fully under the trance of Anatar and almost in his own dream world when not being able to see the battle and fireballs being aimed towards the city. Anatar's control over Celebrimbor has now hit a peak by now even manipulating his surroundings and settings. So the Rings of Power episode 6 is very good though not as strong as its predecessor episode 5 but it still effectively furthers the narrative towards the sack of a region and fully establishes Sauron's deception and might in this form of Anatar and his now total control over Celebrimbor. The episode switches through the storylines well with Numenor also finally progressing as well with the sea trial being a highlight alongside Elendil against Farazhan being an interesting rivalry and overall Lloyd Owen's performance of Elendil as well. The rune storyline still does drag the episode a bit with the stores during the middle of the episode especially but then the pacing and tensions built in a region previously is built back up. Sam Hazeldean Adar continues to be a scene stealer through clearly showcasing his motivations and true vendetta against Sauron. 
please let us know what you thought of episode 6 in the comments below and if you are excited for episode 7 and 8. Thank you guys for watching, we really appreciate it. Please consider donating to our Patreon. But without further ado, we will see you in the episode 5 livestream breakdown and the Sunday show as well. But until the next video my friends, goodbye.